Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on simulating a batch distillation process. In this video, you will learn how to simulate a batch distillation process with reflux using Aspen Batch Modeler version 10. We'll be looking specifically at the 15 tray column located within the UCD School of Chemical and Bioprocess Engineering and considering the same ethanol water mixture and the same operating conditions as employed in the experiment. Then we'll compare the Aspen generated results with the experimental results to make a preliminary decision on the applicability of the Aspen model to the experimental system. If the Aspen model is deemed appropriate, it can then be adopted to investigate a wider range of operating conditions. Please note that there are related video tutorials describing the batch distillation system, safety aspects of its operation and the experimental procedure. In order to model any process, it's essential to have a good understanding of that process, including the chemical species, the equipment and operating conditions. So we'll begin by defining the geometry and dimensions of the pilot scale batch distillation system, illustrated here in both a photograph and a schematic diagram. We'll identify representative operating conditions for a typical experiment. To model this process, we'll use the Aspen Batch Modeler version 10, one of the Aspen Plus tools. Information required by Aspen Batch Modeler can be grouped under four headings. Column geometry and dimensions, initial conditions in the system, the operating conditions or steps, and the final conditions at the end of the process. Let's now summarise that information. Further detail is available in the video tutorial on the distillation equipment. To define the batch distillation block in Aspen, you must provide, under configuration, the number of stages, including both the still pot and the condenser, even though we consider it to be a total condenser, i.e. in which no separation takes place. The valid phases must be defined, which, for our ethanol water system, are liquid and vapour, since liquid ethanol and water are miscible. Next, the still pot is characterised in terms of orientation and type of still pot employed, its diameter and vertical height. Overhead data are required. We assume the distillation column is equipped with a total condenser. In order to simulate this total condensation condition, a very large value of condenser reflux ratio is chosen, let's say 10 to the power of 6. Looking at the column heating system, Aspen requires reboiler dimensions, i.e. lower and upper height values specified relative to the bottom of the still pot. Experimentally, pressure drop along the length of the column is simply estimated by means of a pressure gauge installed near the base of the column. However, in Aspen, we opt for a more rigorous evaluation based on tray geometry. We define the condenser pressure and a condenser diameter. For column internals, we use just a single type of tray in this column, so only one internal unit is defined. In terms of initial conditions, Aspen requires the mass and composition of the initial charge. For operating conditions, reflux ratio must be defined. In this case, let's assume that the column is operating at total reflux for the duration of the run. The final conditions must also be defined. Now that we've identified all information required by Aspen to model our pilot scale separation process, let's open Aspen Batch Modeler. A new blank simulation is automatically opened. You'll immediately notice that the modelling environment looks quite different to that in Aspen Plus. Also note that the Aspen Batch tool does not employ a flow sheet. As in Aspen Plus, we start by defining the chemical species involved in the process and the appropriate thermodynamic model. Choose the Rigorous Calculation option to calculate system properties. Click on Edit using Aspen Properties to define components involved in this application. You will be automatically directed to Aspen Plus. As explained in the Aspen Plus tutorials, enter ethanol and water, which are the components in the binary system we're using for this experiment, and adopt the Uniquack model to describe the equilibrium between the components. Then, run Property Analysis Setup and save the current file. Close Aspen Plus. Once back to the Aspen Batch Modeler window, 
you will notice that the components and method have both been updated. Since there is no reaction involved in this distillation, skip the Reaction Models section and move to the Configuration section. Here, the configuration of the batch distillation column must be selected and the number of stages defined. Our column is equipped with 15 trays and a total condenser. Vapour liquid phases are considered. Under pot geometry for the still pot, specify vertical orientation with a hemispherical top and bottom for the still pot head type. Two of three dimensions are required to fully characterise the pot. Diameter, height and volume. Based on the available information, we choose diameter and height and enter the relevant values as previously defined. Within the overhead section, specify a total condenser. Move to the reflux table and select an appropriate condenser reflux ratio. We're choosing a large number, 1 times 10 to the power of 6, to simulate total condensation. Moving to the heating configuration section, since our column has coils, select coils and deselect the jacket. Enter a bottom and top height for the coils as already defined. Provide a coil area as measured from the experimental system. Enter the submenu to input the coil heating information. In this experiment, we are adopting steam as the heating medium. The steam pressure is about 20 psi, with a flow rate of between 10 and 13 kilograms per hour. The heat transfer coefficient is estimated at 250 kilocalories per meter squared per hour per degree C. Within the pressure tab, set the pressure profiles and holdups to calculated in order to perform rigorous calculations to estimate the pressure drop along the column based on column internals. The condenser operates at atmospheric pressure. The condenser inlet diameter has been measured as 7.5 centimetres. Select internals in the navigation panel. Since we employ only a single type of tray in this column and are assuming the same equilibrium for each tray, only one internal has to be created. The starting stage is the second, since the first is the condenser. As there are 15 trays, the end stage is the 16th. Then enter the required tray characteristics as column diameter, spacing between trays and weir height. Define the ratio of weir height to column diameter, which in this case is 0.21. Enter the percentage of active area, whole area and the assumed discharge coefficient. Note that the definition for these values can be better understood by consulting the Aspen help function. Move to the initial condition window and provide the initial fresh charge information. Approximately 11.5 kilograms are fed to the system prior to starting the experiment, with a concentration of 20% ethanol on a mass basis. At this stage, you're required to define the operating steps to be simulated. In this tutorial, we'll consider only a total reflux condition or step. Click on New and enter Total Reflux. The operating step can be defined in different ways. Since we know the desired reflux ratio, set the step location to Reflux Splitter and then select Reflux Ratio. To simulate total reflux, define the reflux ratio as a large number, again 10 to the power of 6. Since total reflux applies from the start of the experiment, we impose a ramp duration of 0. Move to End Conditions and specify a simulation time of 1 hour. Now, the model is complete and ready to be run. While the simulation is running, you can monitor the progress of the calculations in the Simulation Messages window. Generated results associated with the simulated total reflux scenario are now available and can be reviewed either in numerical or graphical form. The results can be viewed as profiles across the simulated time period. Before deciding to use these results, or to use the model to explore other operating conditions for the same experimental system, it's important to take the time to verify the results. We're seeking some preliminary evidence that the Aspen model is appropriate to describe our experimental system. So let's compare simulated and experimental results obtained for the same operating conditions. Aspen Batch Modeler generates many results, so there are different comparisons which can be made. In this case, let's look at the composition and temperature profiles at the end of the run. 
experimentally determined values are shown on the right-hand side of this table, while the simulated values are on the left. Based on a simple comparison, you'll see that there's very good agreement between them. Differences are minimal, generally lower than about 3%. A clearer picture can be obtained by graphing the profiles. On this basis, we conclude that there is an acceptable match between the experimental and simulated profiles, and we can use the Aspen Batch Modeler to simulate other operating conditions beyond those investigated experimentally. On the other hand, if there was poor agreement, we could seek to improve on the model. For instance, we could define different internals, introduce efficiencies, and any other system characteristics we've been able to evaluate based on our experimental data. To introduce a change to the Aspen Batch simulation, click the Restart button, but be aware that this action will delete all data generated during the last simulation. In summary, this video tutorial explained how to simulate an existing batch distillation process using Aspen Batch Modeler. You know that detailed characterization of both the column geometry and the operating conditions is required. We saw how to simulate a total reflux condition and how to perform a preliminary evaluation of the model via comparison between experimental and simulated results. Finally, we saw how to introduce changes to the model with a view to either better describing our experimental system or investigating system performance under different operating conditions. Thank you for your attention.